In 2010, Matt Smith's unusual and new, more classic fairy tale take on the Time Lord burst onto our screens, with a whole new set of adventures, picking up from the instant we left off. The Doctor has seen the impact and positivity he has made throughout the universe, and he is beginning on what he believes to be his final and last incarnation. He is once again content and eager to see as much of the universe as he can. What both Moffat's writing and Smith's portrayal capture so well is that sense of the old man trapped in a young, excitable man's body. Eleven is the Doctor's physically youngest incarnation to date, and, as Madame Vastra would rightly point out in Deep Breath, the Eleventh Doctor wore his face as she wore a veil, simply to be accepted. This metaphor works both in the narrative of the show and in real life. Fresh off Tenants, who is arguably the most popular Doctor ever, after his departure, the audience once again had to be shown that the Doctor was still fundamentally the Doctor. He was the same character they all knew and loved, while also allowing Matt Smith to add his own unique stamp on the Doctor. But before we dive right in, I'm here to inform you that today's video is sponsored by Icy Flex. If you enjoy Fortnite, Rocket League, Brawl Stars, or video gaming in general, go and check out their channel. Link will be in the description and at the end of the video. Unlike the previous two Doctors, and Doctors yet to come, Matt Smith's Doctor stays roughly the same throughout most of his era even when he believed he would die in the Impossible Astronaut arc. This is all until he tragically loses Amy and Rory, companions who have been with him for many years of their and his life. The pair made such a profound impact on his life, as can be seen in episodes like The Power of Three. The Doctor is bored and lost, not knowing what to do when he isn't on adventures with the pair. Karen Gillan and Arthur Darville stayed on for three series, which is incredibly unusual for companions, and at the time was longer than any New Who companion had stayed so far. This further illustrates the tragedy of their loss and entrapment by the Weeping Angels. When they do leave, understandably, the Eleventh Doctor is caught in a whirlwind of emotions, locking himself away in the clouds, once again blending in with the poetic fairy tale nature of Moffat and Smith's era. He has lost his purpose, and so many people that he is effectively retired and is sulking away in Victorian London. Attempts are made to help him by the Paternostra gang, but they cannot convince the Doctor to be himself again. No one can. That is until a certain Miss Clara Oswald stumbles across him. A Victorian barmaid, who he is sure he has met previously, we finally see him happy again, almost returning to his former glory. He even gives Clara the whole bigger-on-the-inside treatment of the TARDIS. That is, until she once again dies. Although this is tragic and greatly upsets the Doctor, he no longer cowers away. Rather, he had finally found a purpose for his life again, uncovering the mystery of the impossible girl, and keeping, once he finds her, new modern-day Clara safe. This arc culminates in the Series 7 B finale, Name of the Doctor, where he uncovers the mystery of how Clara saves his life, and the reality finally hits him. He's on his last life, and... He will die soon. Or so he thinks. The Day of the Doctor seems Eleven team up with his prior selves to finally save Gallifrey. The arc that had been the reason for all of his PTSD, upset, rage and anger, tracing right back to the beginnings of the revival in 2005. He finally has the chance to put things right, to make the right choice, to escape the ethical trolley problem and save the universe, and he manages to achieve it. He saves those people he was sure for so many years he had lost. This once again sets up another arc for the Doctor. He must find Gallifrey. 
into he continues to live for thousands and thousands of years, saving the town and all its inhabitants from all the evil creatures he has ever fought against. He accepts that his life is at an end to development of any doctor ever. Due to the events of Trenzalor and his questioning of all the decisions he has ever made, he wonders... Gotta be my pal. Tell me. Am I a good man? He is lost in confusion and doesn't know who he is. His personality seems to be so vastly different from what it used to be. He's much darker and far more edgy, struggling to live up to the title and the promise of being the Doctor, the word for wise man and healer throughout the universe. In his first episode, it's even left for interpretation as to whether the Doctor killed the half-faced man or alternatively, talked him into suicide. Is this the Doctor that we know and love? Once again, this dramatic shift in character is reflected in the Doctor's costume. No scarfs, bow ties, or none of that nonsense. Just as the, all the promotional material of 2015 pointed out, he's simply 100% Rebel Time Lord. His and Clara's relationship is damaged. He's not the same man she remembers. The pair struggle with their relationship, with Capaldi quite rightly reminding her... Clara, I'm not your boyfriend. I never thought you were. I never said it was your mistake. The two even agree to go their separate ways, but Clara is addicted to travelling. That character development video is for another time. This... Am I a Good Man arc continues throughout Series 8, one of Twelve's defining moments, and the moment we see Clara fully, fully accept him for who he is, is his speech in the episode Flatline. But he himself is still not sure who the Doctor is. As pointed out at the end of the very same episode, he tells Clara... You were an exceptional Doctor, Clara. Thank you. Goodness had nothing to do with it. This is all until he proves himself. He can finally answer the question that has plagued his mind for the previous 12 adventures. The question of whether or not he is a good man. I am an idiot. The box and the screwdriver. Just passing through, helping out, learning. Then, free of the question and reinvigorated with the love of travel, in what is presumably a large time jump, we meet the Twelfth Doctor at the start of 2015's Series 9. He's a changed man. Once again, thinking he's going to die, he goes through what only can be described as one of the biggest midlife crises ever witnessed. I bought it for my fish. Your fish? I may have ordered online! And I mean a big midlife crisis. Dude! I've got some sad news for you, dudes. Clara, similarly to Rose, is helping the Doctor find himself again. Helping him to understand who he is. Such as the Manners cards, seen in episodes like Before the Flood and Under the Lake, which help the Doctor once again feel compassion and understanding of other people's losses. This builds up to his speech in the Zygon inversion. He is firmly cemented in the role of the Doctor by then. He knows who he is now. He has a purpose. In the Series 9 finale, Clara is killed and the Doctor spends four billion years trapped in the confession dial with the sole motive of saving her. He does and he goes mental. He finally breaks out into Gallifrey, shooting the Gallifreyan general. He's back home. After all these years of searching, he's finally on the planet he wants. He's home, Gallifrey. But he realises the people who matter to him are actually far more important than these irrelevant Time Lords who only now support him simply because he saved their lives. He has longed for Gallifrey from the beginning, yet now he realised all he truly needed for happiness were his friends, his true companions, in this place, Clara. 
hence why he nearly tears the universe apart in desperately trying to save her. Sadly, his memory is wiped of all traces of Clara, and he goes off to spend his last night with River Song. I say last night, last 24 years. After River's death, Twelve is understandably upset, but he's learnt from the events of Hellbent. He cannot break and destroy time for those he loves, no matter how much he wants to. As he says to Bill in Thin Ice of Series 10, he has to move on. The Doctor has finally learnt that moving on is the best thing to do. He accepts that River has died, then delivers a beautiful speech in the closing moments of the controversial Christmas special, The Return of Doctor Mysterio. Then, he's given a new purpose, by River, from beyond the grave. He must guard Missy in the vault and keep her in lockdown. He is waiting for her to go, as he describes it, cold turkey. He simply wants his friend back. To fill the time, he gets a job lecturing at a university, while protecting the vault with Nardol. He meets legendary companion Bill Potts, a breath of fresh air. The two have great chemistry together, but the Doctor doesn't want to lose her, or anyone else, like he lost River or Clara. Unlike most modern companions, there's no romance whatsoever between the Doctor and Bill, simply a perfect mutual student-teacher relationship. But, as always, his happy adventurous side gets the better of him, and he and Bill sneak away from the vault for more adventures, eventually being joined by Nardole, and even further on, being joined by Missy. Toward the end of the series, it can be seen that Capaldi's doctor took on the role of a professor to give something back to the universe, and to help and inspire. But, most of all, he wants Missy to be good. He wants to save his best friend from evil. They try it, but it ends up in Bill being brutally killed, shot through the chest, and then converted by a previous master, John Sim, into the first ever Cyberman. This is horrendous to have to deal with for the Doctor. He once again has led to another companion's death. He ends up sacrificing himself for the good of everyone else on the ship and the rest of the universe. Without hope, without witness, without reward. And after doing so, he begins to regenerate. But this time it's different. He doesn't want to change. He's refusing the regeneration. He's fed up of having to save the world. He doesn't want to deal with everything that's happened. But, upon meeting his first, well, arguably first after the events of the Timeless Children, incarnation, he finds purpose in life. And, when reminded by Bill and Nardol that without him, the universe might just go cold, he regenerates. But that's a story for next episode. Oh, Berlin. Before you go, remember to check out today's sponsor, Icy Flex, for all your Fortnite, Rocket League, Brawl Stars, Epic Dude Gamer things. Yeah, I don't do games. But you do. Go and subscribe.